So here we are again. Another Trivium album. The last couple that we've talked about has, well, it's not gone very well. Trivium was a great band, and it seems like with their recent output, it's kind of been going on a downhill slope. I always like to talk about the Ascent of bands and them being on a sort of songwriting plateau where they really are on a roll, but Trivium's actually the opposite side of that coin where it seems like it's sloping downward. So with Silence in the Snow, a little bit of a new direction is what was kind of what the doctor ordered, and it was hopeful that this was an album that was going to be able to turn this cart around a little bit for this band, considering they've been kind of getting a little bit beat up by some fans while gaining others. That's the one thing that needs to be understood. This isn't hate. In fact, none of this is hate. It's just criticism, considering other folks would listen to this and absolutely love it. And the people that I'm thinking about are the same folks that love bands such as Disturbed and Five Finger Death Punch. Modern Metal, considering on this album, Trivium really opts to go for a little bit more of a modern metal approach uh, with their entire sound. Now, what exactly do I mean by that? There's a bit of groove that's really uh, a very calculated risk that they used on this album, and it's something that they've always possessed with their semi-thrash, semi-groove sound that they had going on uh, as far back as some of their early albums. And this is uh, something where Silence in the Snow, the track itself, track two on this disc after an introduction, uh, was one that showcased some hope to a lot of individuals that this new sound to the band had a lot of, of great potential to it. Because the clean vocals, and this is an album full of cleans, uh, were pretty well put, and it's something where those who complain about this change of direction need to understand that they listen to songs that are just like this by other bands, maybe ones that are in the Swedish scene or uh, anything aside from that, and find it to be completely and totally okay. So it's sort of one of those put your foot in the mouth, you know, what's good for one should be good for both moments. And as you continue with this release, you start to realize what Trivium on this disc is kind of all about. They're all about clean, very melodic verses that have, you know, a little bit more oomph behind their choruses. The soaring vocals showcase themselves a little bit more there, and that's where you start to draw some of the comparisons to some of the modern metal vocalists. There's some sounds that definitely feel like there is... A bit of a comparison to maybe a David Draymond in some uh, respects. Uh, this is a very unique voice, don't get me wrong. However, there can be some comparison points there considering uh, the highs that are a bit of a strain, but it's still one that is handled semi-decently. The guitar work is... Uh, definitely done with a little bit more of a simplistic approach in mind. These are not complex overall uh, body work for the song. This is not something that's totally blinding you. Solos are still present on this more than you would hear on a modern metal disc. However, these are ones that aren't necessarily 100% complementary. They kind of exist just to sort of exist and do continue to, to kind of flow these songs going on. It's not terrible. In fact, it's pretty well done, but they just at times feel as though it's taking that whole modern metal exterior and trying to add a little bit of punch to it, and the punch just isn't coming forward as extremely strong. However, the, the flow on this album is one that is pretty well designed. It has a lot of positive aspect to it. It's, instead of being one that feels jumbled, is very cohesive. You are able to flow through this pretty simply. Uh, I have to really praise also the song Until the World Goes Cold. Even though this modern approach might not necessarily apply to everybody, this is a great track considering it does what Trivium is able to do fairly well when given the opportunity and whenever they expand something out and give it a little bit more of a writing scale, they have a terrific opportunity to really showcase all the tools in their toolkit. And I think with this one, they really mastered the idea of going a little bit above and beyond. I think one of the reasons why a lot of the groove albums that many people speak about, namely from bands such as Pantera or maybe even Lamb of God, why they get so much love is because they have variety interwoven and intermixed amid all of the big riffs and the attitude. It's something where there's a little bit more that can be seen and heard from the album rather than just the simple, basic math of it. 
And I feel that until the world goes cold goes above and beyond that simple math and showcases Trivium's ability to write with a little bit more creativity. Uh, overall, this isn't an album that is all of that bad. It's just not one that's all of that good. It's kind of stuck in the middle. It doesn't have too much really that's really worthy of being said about it. Excuse me. Tell them what you really think. Remember, it's kill or be killed, cover kill the nation. It's kill or be killed. Let me be real with you. This album was straight up boring from head to toe. A lot of the guitar solos that I just spoke about were largely uninspired, pretty typical, pretty easy to predict. The modern sound is something that post borders on Five Finger Death Punch's level of creativity. And I'm talking the newer stuff. I'm not talking the stuff off of the first pair of albums. This is certainly one that's going to appease their fans, considering it's going to be something to rival their lovely little luscious group of boots and blood bullshit. This is an album that honestly could have done so many things for Trivium. It could have caused them to elevate back up. But once again, it's going to transform me into the bad guy once again. And that's a role that I embrace rather nicely, considering this is just another example that this group has somehow along the way forgotten how to write a really solid metal song. It's instead one that is just littered with kind of typical crap garbage. This doesn't even really feel like Trivium is a top-tier band anymore. It's instead one that's sort of... Lingering in the gallows, down in the basement, down in the bin of heavy metal. And people still eat it up because it does have that nice clean texture to it. It does have that nice invite me in, sit me down, let's have dinner together allure to it. But then you just get a basic bare bones bland dinner. It's almost as though the band went to McDonald's in order to give you some food and you just eat it and consume it. This is a great metaphor for modern day America where something this simple is given high charm. It is better than Five Finger Death Punch. It's not better than the new Disturbed, I'll tell you that. It's certainly not better than the new Death Heaven. Hell, it's not even better than the new Atreyu. Okay, let's stop right there. It is better than the new Atreyu. This has a little bit more creativity than that, but not by much. This album is a 76, no, not even, 75 out of 100. Just enough riffs to get it by, but aside from that, it's got the songwriting talents of a junior high schooler. It's not something that has that much to offer. And there's going to be folks that come in here that say, well, you're just doing it again. You're just doing this for the attention. The devil is in the details, ladies and gentlemen. Revisit the first few albums and you'll understand why they have a lot more to offer than these recent three, perhaps even four. Plain and simple, the writing was tighter, the time frame and the timeline was a little bit more crisp. And really, if we revisit those these days, are they going to be all that good? Or is it just because that was something a little different for the time? Is that all the more that it was? Is that all the more that captivated us was the fact that it was something that was aside from the other bullshit that was happening in the music scene at that moment? Because if that's the case, that's a pretty stupid-ass reason. But it is a way to really establish a fan base. It's really a good reason why Trivium and another band such as Bullet For My Valentine are at the place that they are. Both of those bands are at a cross. Roads pull it for my Valentine did a little bit to try to get themselves out of their funk. Trivium is still locked in it. Kill or be killed. Kill. So, anyway, this is an album that just feels very middle of the road. There's a lot of conflict that seems to be occurring within the confines of its own sound. It's not one that's very bold and adventurous. The only thing that's adventurous about it is really the change over in the way in which they're handling their business. And it's not even one that's all of that unpredictable. It was something where it seemed that the band was heading down that road anyhow. Uh, I think Silence in the Snow may help them gain a couple of more fans in the fact that it's got that metal or that modern exterior, but whenever it comes to the diehards that have been really clamoring for a great album from this band for the past couple, they're not going to find it here. I already gave this a score, right? It's like a 75 out of 100, I would say. It's... Yeah. It's just kind of there. It's just kind of existing. And it's kind of disappointing, considering I was hoping that this was going to be the turnaround album.
I feel like I just experienced some sort of deja vu. Anyway, I want to know what you guys think about this album. Uh, leave me a comment uh, in the comments below, and uh, let me know what you think about this band, what you think about their direction over these past couple of years, and uh, what you think about Silence in the Snow, obviously. I'm Cover Killer Nation, and that was really strange. It was really weird. I have a bit of a headache. I'll talk to you guys later. I'm 